I'm going to talk about uh, lipo batteries that swell up and what's going on and what you should do with them and how to make them safe for disposal. Uh, first of all, uh, lipos, high power ones and, uh, and uh, low power ones tend to swell up often for no reason at all. You've not used them for a while, you get them out and they've, there's been a swelling up, the case is swollen and uh, or sometimes you've charged them up and the uh, next day they're swollen or even after a race you've left them half charged which should be fine they swell up there just seems to be no reason why anyway what should you do if they swell up uh, generally if it's a, a very small swelling like on this one uh, in my experience it, they're still fine to use um, they don't uh, lose any performance, noticeable performance and uh, as long as they uh, as a small swelling you can just glue the case back together they seem to be fine however um, they often swell up more if you use them hard especially in buggies where you've got a lot or a low turn motor that really hammers them once they start to swell you might find they swell some more now is it safe if they're swelling up well, these um, sacks that they're in are very tough uh, underneath this uh, black heat shrink. There's, a, there's another sack that seals them in, which is a very tough uh, type of plastic the ma manufacturers have made that can swell up to a really large size without bursting. And it also has the ability, if it gets a small cut, to reseal itself. Anyway, what should, what you sh should you do with a swollen battery? But generally, it's, it's lost performance. You might as well dispose of it rather than, rather than risk it swelling up even more or something happening to it. How should you um, dispose of it? Well, uh, the manufacturers say uh, put it in a bucket of salt water. There's a couple of reasons why they say that. One is um, the salt water is a resistance, has a resistance, and it will slowly discharge the battery, the same as if you put a resistance across the terminals and slowly discharge it to zero volts. Also if the battery has a, has a worse, um, got a cut or something in it, uh, what happens, why they swell up is the water vapour in the air gets into the battery, reacts with the electrolyte, produces hydrogen and that is the hydrogen inside is what has made it swell up. Now uh, you can't make a hole in the battery and let the hydrogen out because um, hydrogen combined with oxygen and any energy which and the cell has a lot of energy uh, normally creates an instant fire and you can't put it out. So in a bucket of salt water they're thinking uh, if there is a cut and you put it in the water uh, it's the water getting into the cell. Um, more water goes in, more reaction, and so the battery might uh, discharge itself, swell up, on, on burst in the water. And so the water will take away the heat, and any smoke or fire or anything like that will be absorbed in the water rather than just leaving it in the atmosphere. But generally, you put it in the water to short it out. Now, water doesn't have a very Water with salt in it uh, doesn't have a very good uh, low resistance, so it will take day, um, days to discharge a battery, maybe even weeks. So if you're going to put it in a bucket of salt water before you dispose of it, you have to leave it in there ages. Um, but even after putting it in a bucket of salt water, uh, it never is fully discharged. And the only way you can fully discharge a LiPo is to put a resistance across the terminal. If it's a small battery like this, you, I can discharge it with this little resistor, 6.8 ohms. You can uh, put it in across the plus and minus, and it'll discharge it. With a bigger battery like this, you're going to need a low resistance, like a discharger. Here's a bank of resistors, which is less than 1 ohm in total. Draws a lot of current. And you can put it on that until you get it down to zero. Um, even that, you have to leave it on a few hours before it go down. Here's um, one that's been on a 
on this discharger for several hours and it goes down to zero and it's swollen up quite a lot and this is um, as you can see these bag sacks can swell up a lot and they won't burst is it safe once uh, it's fully discharged well yes once you've taken all the energy out of this cell uh, it will not catch fire if you puncture it and then it's safe to dispose of in the dustbin and and uh, won't catch fire if it's crushed however if you leave any energy in it at all even a tiny bit you will get some smoke if if uh, it's punctured um, other ways of discharging them well uh, most chargers have a discharge function uh, which will take a lipo down but only to about three volts per cell and that still leaves a lot of energy in in the pack if you put it on a discharger it's still if you puncture it it will still catch fire um, so if you really want to make it safe uh, you are either going to have to leave it in this sort solution for days and days and days or um, put a resistor across it. We probably don't have a resistor or, or a discharger that will take it down to zero. Anyway, uh, what I'm going to show also is once um, this is fully discharged to zero volts, uh, I'm going to show you what's inside the cell. We're going to cut it open. I discharged this pack down on a, a normal... Um, discharger but only it takes it down to about six volts so then I put it on this high power discharger uh, and left it on and as you can see it didn't like that at all and it's, it burst out the case now like a con really swollen uh, took an extra 686 milliamps to get it from uh, the point where this stopped discharging to discharge it to zero so it's quite um, a lot of uh, energy was still left in the battery. Anyway, there's the voltmeter now showing 3.4 millivolts. So it's, uh, that's about as low as it go, but I mean, you can leave it on um, uh, a bit longer. And also, um, when I disconnect the resistor, I'll see if any voltage recovers or not before um, we take this apart. Discharging this uh, battery down to absolute zero volts, um, even when it gets to zero, it really does swell up. This is quite warm. Even though it's been on a little while, it's still generating a bit of current, 0.4 amps, and a tiny bit of voltage. That's got to go down to zero. Uh, before, this would be totally safe to open up because any residual uh, energy will course uh, well not much but some puffs of smoke and that which you don't want so it's amazing how much energy it they can just keep on squeezing out even when it should be dead for that <laughs> it's like a concertina now but as you see they swell up pretty big but they don't burst these sacks are very very uh, strong after a few more hours on the very low ohm uh, discharge resistance uh, this is reading no amps, no volts. Finally uh, discharged and check it with a meter. It's reading 10 millivolts, which is really next to nothing. Um, so that's safe to um, throw away, but it's also safe to cut open without any fire. So uh, we can cut this open and out and uh, have a look to see what's in it. This one discharged dead flat now, no voltage. It's already burst the case open. So as you can see, taking it out, it's got um, connections that have been uh, soldered to the positive and negative here with um, really thick wires. So we can cut them off. Get them out of the way and try and pull it out. Manufacturers do tend to glue these into the cases. I've done probably for ease of manufacture. And as you can see, this is um this was a 1S half of a saddle pack. Uh, it's got three pouches for um 
high performance well 5400 milliamps so each one is a third of that so in parallel to make it up to 54 um, they probably use three for ease of manufacture rather than one big fat one it's um, more likely if they've got failures uh, they can in one pack it's easier to throw one away and throw one big one away if it's got a failure in it when they've manufactured it anyway they're welded on the end I've got a code on it uh, I don't know why this got this white piece on on the back and as I say they're normally glued together there's various bits of glue there so we need to cut one off uh, obviously there's a positive and a negative and these are quite uh, strong bits of like aluminium that have been welded together eventually you can get one out it's got a little bit of rubber on it as well Uh, the swelling inside is uh, hydrogen gas. Um, when you squeeze it, it tends to go down. Maybe it's got a hole where it's leaking out. So it's just a matter of um, you can cut it open now that it's dead zero volts uh, without any problem. top off as I said these pouches are pretty strong it's so that they don't uh, swell up and um, when they swell up they don't split so there's the um, inside it's got a strange sweet smell so I don't know if that's um, good or bad for you I should be wearing a glove really it's got the electrolyte um, so you've got your two connections and it's all rolled up I'll just get a glove and so um, this one's quite well made looks quite difficult to open up so um, See if we can just rip these off for a start. For the power, they um, fold them up loads and loads of layers. Wrap round and round and round. You've got the anode, the cathode, and the liquid is the the electrolyte in between. You've got the polymer. Yeah, and just loads, loads of them to give you the power. you plenty of power just wrap round and round and round as I said if they get a manufacturing fault uh, it's better for them to throw away a small one and one giant one so that's probably why they put them in uh, parallel it smells a bit so there's not a lot in it I suppose this is black, what they call graphene, but it's not graphene. Um, so that's it. The high power battery. It's quite safe when it's fully discharged to zero volts. If we had one here that was um, discharged at six volts and I punctured it, it definitely would have smoked. And possibly we had a bit of flame. It'd have to be at zero. 
and that's what's inside. Now you can dispose of this in the dustbin and it's not going to catch fire. Here's another one, this is to zero volts, the swelling on that. You can now... Anyway, this is a 2S one. So we've got um, two, two uh, individual cells each side in parallel to give the capacity and two on this side and then joined in series to give you 7.4 volts. Really stuck in, got it out. Hydrogen and uh, the connections are all done by soldering and uh, welding the ends on some special machine to get them on. Um, I don't know if we can cut that off. That's a bit. Almost cut one off. There's one, it's got some manufacturing code on it. When they manufacture these, they're all manufactured obviously without any energy in them before they put them together. And then, um, before they put any energy in them, they're safe and they're manufactured. This one's got a copper plate here that'd be, um, one of the anodes, or I'm not sure if it's a negative or positive. And then that's going to be wrapped around. Let's see if we can get this off. And then you just got this um, layer again. Which goes round and round and round. That's just caught on the end. If we can get it apart, there. Just the same as the other one. Just loads and loads of layers wrapped round and round and round. The separators and it's uh, the liquid inside. Oh, a bit of a mess. So you've got that, like a polymer. Bung that in the this the separator. Uh, and the electrolyte and uh, th this one's got a copper electrode which is obviously very good for conducting um, electricity that's why it's obviously a high power one 90c probably improves the uh, performance there's the other bit of it <coughs> oh god it does smell a bit you know, I don't recommend you do this. I was just showing you what was inside. Um, and that it's then completely safe when it's discharged completely uh, to zero volts.